Right, so if the benefit system were to collapse in the near future, where would that leave you? Well, the Department for Work and Pensions might be in a great deal more trouble than we ever thought. We know there are backlogs, of course. We know they've had years of reforms which have proven difficult to the point of impossible to implement. And, of course, people have suffered as a result. They have been driven towards not helping people into work, but forcing them to do so anyway if they can. The threat of absolute poverty being dangled over the head of every person who might be out of work, might be long-term sick or disabled, and if anything, they've in no small part contributed to the damage to people's health so many of their victims frankly suffer from. But staff at the DWP, their own staff, have now blown the whistle on just how big a crisis the department and the benefit system itself faces. A devastating dossier of a failing organisation in a state of crisis has now come to light. Right, so what's all this about then, Damo? I've heard nothing at all of anywhere about the DWP being in trouble. Where has this come from? Well, unless it's the government cracking down on people, the government are calling shirkers because they aren't workers, or the disabled, the long-term sick, their carers, people who've been out of work for a multitude of reasons, and indeed a great many people who are in work, but for whom work doesn't actually pay. Of course, where the DWP is concerned, you need to include pensioners as well in this. Unless it is a tax on people like that, red meat for the frothing gammon class that sells headlines, they don't care. Thankfully, alternative media is there who do. And on all things DWP, if you aren't taking a look at Disability News Service, then you won't be hearing an awful lot about what's going on in the benefit system within Social Security or the DWP, or on a great many other things that are related to that. Uh, they are frankly disgusted that this story is not being picked up further, so I'm more than happy as a carer myself to draw attention to this, because so many low-income families won't have any idea of what is brewing in the Department for Work and Pensions, and I was stunned by this. The dossier has been put together by the Public and Commercial Services Union, trade unions doing the job again, the PCS, whose members include staff at the DWP, and this is where the crux of the problem lies. The DWP are so short-staffed now that they're barely able to keep it going. The PCS union itself has accused the DWP of deliberate neglect after its members said they believed benefit claimants in vulnerable situations were falling through the gaps in the system. One manager describing staff facing completely overwhelming workloads. Another, a DWP staff member who works in counter-fraud, compliance and debt said, we are also experiencing more threats of suicide by claimants, in some cases already attempted, sometimes successfully. The report, all 64 pages of it, that the mass media are ignoring, gives example after example after example of testimony from DWP employees that the absolute bare minimum is barely getting done and people are already falling through the gaps. There's a race on to get everybody on legacy benefits like Job Seekers Allowance and Employment and Support Allowance, ESA, moved on to Universal Credit by the end of next year that we've heard the Tories come out with. But the workload for Universal Credit, however, is apparently already so unsustainable that if the workload can't be kept on top of, then people are falling through the cracks already. Almost certainly some will be amongst the most vulnerable. And what then will happen to them? Sanctions, presumably. It's always them that get the blame for anything going wrong, isn't it? Understaffing is so serious, such a massive threat to just being able to deliver the most basic service that the DWP are short by some 30,000 people, 30,000 workers to meet required staffing levels. They can't recruit. Who wants to do the job, you might think? The emphasis is on punishing people rather than helping them. Certainly doesn't make for a good job satisfaction criteria, does it? But also people are being overworked due to the staffing levels. Sickness is up. Pay is low, so retention of staff is terrible as well. It is a department that has been run into the ground by the Tories for years because they are just fixated on getting people into work, whether they're able to do so or not. When working the, for the DWP itself is a low pay, stressful, overworked environment too, they aren't exactly leading by example either. Now, many people who have been victims of the system, I could include myself and my own family in this, we've been through this too, we've thought this too. Do we really care about these people? I gave some thought to this. Do I really care about the people who work in the DWP? When the media makes poverty clickbait programming, glorifying the punishment of the most vulnerable, getting more people to hate on them, the staff that make the news are always the rotten ones, so that we end up believing they're all like that. But they aren't. Most people who work there are going to be decent human beings just trying to get by, make a living like all of us. That they just happen to work for one of the most reviled government departments going because of how the Tories have run it, and not entirely excusing Labour before that either. The people there on 
wages so low, some of them, they are universal credit claimants themselves. One person working there said, I have worked for the DWP for over 40 years, and to be honest, I am totally worn out physically and mentally. My health has suffered enormously, having to struggle with always being understaffed. This is because of constant pressure, poor pay, and staff leaving to go to better jobs with better pay and less stressed. So I resigned. I felt I had no other option. Another said, the level of staffing for service delivery in my office is astonishingly low, stressful and unsustainable. The levels of staff leaving, sickness, etc. are by far the worst I've ever seen. I feel unsafe at times and under considerable pressure. There's another comment I want to make mention of as well, as it refers to the old system of benefits, which so many people are still on. The member of staff in question here saying, Employment and Support Allowance, ESA, was a ticking time bomb due to the lack of experienced staff and warned that millions of ESA claims are incorrect and these vulnerable customers could be owed thousands. There are more than 250 examples from different members of staff in the DWP that are given evidence for this dossier and made statements on what it is like to work there. Here's a couple of examples of what's been included in the report. I work in a small job centre in Wales. I suffer from late onset chronic fatigue as well as being autistic. After fighting, I finally got a reasonable adjustment to work from home on the two days our office is closed to the public. A month ago, I was informed I would have to return to the office full time as one of our work coaches was moving to a new role and I would have to be in office to meet minimum numbers for health and safety, covering leave and other absences. This was to be until a replacement was recruited, but within a week became permanent. It's shameful that a disabled person's reasonable adjustment is being stolen away. Another wrote, I am part of a universal credit review team. There's around 2000 of us across the country. My job is to establish if there is any fraudulent activity on a claim currently in place. If there is, I will then push it to a fraud advisor. As things stand, there are only four fraud advisors to support us. This has a huge impact on the workload as cases are taking months instead of days or weeks. It has a huge impact on the public purse as we are basically ignoring 90% of fraudulent activity. This essentially renders any universal credit review pointless. Even if we find anything, there's nowhere for it to go. If the government cared, they would have more staff to increase efficiency. I think it is safe to say the government do not care. After all, Jeremy Hunt just declared a raft of reforms for whom the staff clearly are not in place to deliver any of them. Little wonder when it came to his little snooping bill on people's bank accounts that he put the onus on the banks to do that. There's clearly no staff at the DWP to spare to do it. When they can't deliver the service they're already supposed to be delivering. The big emphasis on cracking down on benefit fraud again though, when 90% of fraudulent activity not that there's very much of it in the benefit system anyway, it is minuscule, but when that much of it goes unchecked, for all those expecting the DWP to crack down on that, to get value from the public purse, the Tories always promise and make so much of, well, it's clearly not happening, is it? By far the bigger issue, though, is claimants being let down there. Having to wait weeks and months instead of days to see changes in their circumstances enacted. With universal credit, you have to update, update these things monthly. How in hell are they getting their needs met in which case? They might be doing everything as to them, but the DWP in turn fail them. Who's more likely to suffer for that, get sanctioned for that, even when things fall through the cracks, even though it's clearly the DWP's fault? And we've had stories like that going on for years, haven't we? Nothing's got any better. If anything, it's got worse. This dossier got handed to the DWP last Tuesday by the PCS union, and they warned the DWP that it was currently running a workforce 30,000 people below the required staffing levels and asking for a meeting with Work and Pension Secretary Mel Stride to discuss this. The guy who sat beside Hunt when he was delivering that autumn statement, nodding along and smiling at these latest announcements of his. The PCS union has been overwhelmed by the power and volume of the responses it received from DWP staff. The PCS union's DWP group president, chap called Martin Cavanaugh, has said, the responses contained in this document demonstrate that the DWP is a failing organisation in a state of crisis. This crisis has been created by a government whose policies are vindictive towards claimants that need support and not the punishment that our members are expected to dish out. The members' testimonies demonstrate that the staffing crisis in the DWP is creating an epidemic of mental ill health amongst staff and failing to protect the most vulnerable citizens in society. Many of society's most marginalised are becoming desperate. We call on ministers to read as much of this dossier as they can possibly stomach, take responsibility and provide our members with the tools to do the job and the standard of living they have earned. So what's the response from the DWP been then, Damo? Well, on Wednesday, the DWP got in touch. So the day after, 
but they might as well have not bothered because there was no response from Mel Stride to the dossier or to say if the department accepted that there were problems with staffing levels, safeguarding flaws and unsafe conditions for both staffing claimants, including with Universal Credit and ESA. It also declined to provide a response from Stride to the concerns of the dossier about Universal Credit and the risk of vulnerable claimants falling through the gaps. The DWP also refused to say if Stride would meet with the union and how he responded to the union's claim that the DWP was a failing organisation in a state of crisis and that this crisis had been created by a government whose policies were vindictive towards claimants who needed support. Did Mel Stride ever see it? Has he looked at it? Does he even know he's got it? A DWP spokesman said in a statement, we are committed to supporting the well-being of our staff and provide access to a comprehensive range of assistance for their physical and mental health. We have recruitment plans in place to maintain key services, providing excellent opportunities for existing staff and new recruits who are playing a vital role in our next generation welfare reforms to help thousands back into jobs, grow the economy and drive down inflation. Yeah, it really sounds like they're listening, doesn't it? The DWP is dying on its backside and the Tories are spectators instead of doing what they actually need to do to fix it, to deliver for the lowest paid and the long term sick and disabled. They don't care. They are incapable of delivering anything they are promising on this, aren't even bothered about their own staff and their issues. This dossier, it seems, for all that Mel Stride cares, is probably in a bin. And frankly, if the department collapsed along with the notion of social security, I doubt the Tories would be bothered very much by that whatsoever. There's always someone else to blame. They'd probably blame the claimants themselves for not working hard enough or not at all. Their fault for being sick. Their fault for there being so many of them. It's what Tories do. Great work by Disability News Service on this and the PCS Union, of course. Please do look them up, subscribe and support to them if you can. The job they do, reporting and covering on the DWP stuff virtually exclusively, is so important because nobody else seems to. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did more content daily. Please do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where Mel Stride got the DWP gig back in September, replacing Therese Coffey. And he seems set on making himself the new Dr. Death at that point. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.